So why do we do intake quantization of neural networks? Well, this is because neural networks are typically represented in floating point 32, sometimes floating point 16, sometimes floating point 64, but typically floating point 32, they're trained in floating point 32, they run in floating point 32, and that's very nice because floating point 32 is quite a, a detailed numerical format. If you squint, it's kind of continuous, and it, it just works very well. It allows you to represent numbers with a high degree of precision. But the problem is that when, when you actually take a neural network, you know, in FP32, and then you actually try to run it in inference or as a kind of some sort of production model, you can find that it's very slow. It consumes a lot of power. The memory footprint is quite large, and that can be a concern. And so or the typical solution is to take this FP32 model and convert it to an int8 model. Int8 is just a different numerical format. The hint is in the name, floating point 32 uses floating point numbers with 32 bits. Int8 uses integer representation with eight bits. There are some fundamental differences between the two other than just the size. Integer a numerical format takes advantage of integer arithmetic. And that means that you inherently have fixed resolutions. So if you have eight bits, then you only have zero to 255 fixed values that you can represent versus floating point. It's slightly more continuous in a way because you have a fraction and then you have an exponent component of floating point numbers, which is why they're so popular. It's why they're kind of commonly used as they, they have nice properties in terms of being able to represent a wide range of numbers, int, integer numbers, not so much. But the very nice thing about integer representations is that they can take advantage of integer arithmetic, which is much, much, much faster than floating point. For example, if you have an int 8 number uh, and you divide it by 2, then you, you have your 8 bits. You can just shift them to the right, and that's your division by 2 done. So there are many benefits to working in int 8, just on the computational side. But anyway, long story short, when you go from floating point 32 to int 8, you typically reduce your memory by four times because you just eight bits instead of 32. You go much faster, typically between three to four times, depending on how you do the quantization. There's certain kinds of quantization that are faster than others, depending on like the kind of ingredients that you use and then your power consumption goes down as well. So those are typically the reasons we do intate. I will add a bonus reason why we do intate, and it, it is not relevant to most use cases. It's an extremely niche reason, but there are certain neural networks which uh, can be highly sensitive to floating point differences because floating point um, arithmetic, uh, for example, if you do a convolution, there are different algorithms to do a convolution and depending on what hardware you're on, they've done their own optimizations and the algorithm that they use can vary. And that can mean that you end up with very, very small floating point differences in, in your output, which typically they won't matter. Like, it, you know, it's basically hardware agnostic, but you have some neural networks that are extremely sensitive to these kinds of discrepancies in which case your, your entire application may just not work at all if there's any non-determinism. Int8 is actually deterministic. So if you need determinism in your application, generally speaking, you will not. It's highly unlikely you will, but if you do, Int8 is also typically the way to go. So those are the reasons why we do Int8 quantization of neural networks. It sounds great, but there are costs to this, and the typical cost is reduced performance. This can be very small if your network quantizes very well, or it can be a massive drop in performance if your neural network does not quantize well. And that is what the field of int8 is about, is how do we make sure our neural networks quantize as well as possible? There are many, many things we can do uh, to improve the performance of the quantized neural networks, and that is basically what this channel will be about. So yeah, welcome to the channel.